The Green Room at Lift Vancouver is brought to you by Cloud9 Cannabis Coaching. If you have suffered from anxiety, chronic pain, or depression, like I have, you know full well how debilitating it can be. Brady Sparrow, founder of Cloud9 Coaching, specializes in microdosing cannabis to help her clients lead more balanced lives. Whether you've been using cannabis your entire adult life or just now learning about this incredible plant, Brady's simple microdosing guide will help you find the perfect balance in just one month. Brady is about to host her first 30-day challenge called Find Your Cloud9 in 30 Dope Days. I'm doing it and you should too. So why not go over to cloud9coaching.com and join us. Be sure to use coupon code Jackie, J-A-C-Q-U-I, for a special green room discount. What's going on, everybody? This is Lester from Cannabis Wiki here with my best co-host ever. Ever, yeah. <laughs> Jackie Childs, hey guys, welcome to the green room. We have our friend, the Cannabis Small A, Andrew. It's me. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. Thanks for coming. Lift is a blast so far, right? Yeah, totally excited. You're all work. I get to do all the parties. I get the fun job. I'm, I'm the guy that gets everybody drunk and stoned. And you, you just have to listen to all the stories. And look good. Look at you. Sharp as hell. You got to put on a suit so we impress the other suits, Congratulations. right? Congratulations. Just got married. Thank you so in much. Jamaica. Yes, Jamaica is fantastic. Montego Bay, the perfect place to tie the knot. And, fill it full of cannabis culture and lots of good ganja. Nice. What, do you, what do you do in the cannabis industry? Tell us, for those that don't know what the cannabis sommelier, sommelier. does. <laughs> so I'm the cannabis sommelier. I teach people how to pair cannabis with wine, craft beer, cocktail with cannabis. I host cannabis fine dining events all over North America. And I'm really trying to help build a bridge uh, through eating. A, eating such an amazing vehicle that we have and something that we do so often and using it to normalize cannabis consumption is really my mission and a great opportunity for me to see cannabis explode worldwide. Mm. Yeah, I'm, not just in Canada, he's everywhere. I'm always sold on food. <laughs> right? <laughs> Good food, you win. We met at Hemp Fest. He was the MC. The head judge. You, the head, we oh, used my 100 point scoring system, which is fantastic. That's right. Mm. And um, I recently got a little bit more of that passion fruit that won. Yes, wonderful. <laughs> we got to get you some fantastic Vancouver uh, brands, some awesome stuff. We are pretty close to Gastown, so we'll find you some great, Ooh. great flowers that what's, way. Okay, what's your favorite in BC? What's your favorite? Uh, for a clear market producer, a legal producer, or our friends in the silver market. Oh. Let's, let's start with the first. Let's start with number one. Yeah, in the in, in the recreational market, my favorite brand to go to is Broken Coast. Uh, I've been a patient with them in the ACPR for years. Consistent quality medicine. And then... Uh, Master grower Kevin over there. Yeah, Broken Coast Kev. He's, he's fantastic. And then mm. in the... Um, Silver market, our legacy market. It's got to be Gastown. That's it was. A, I was given a little bit of a double entendre there. It's fa fantastic uh, brand of cannabis that really respects what uh, cannabis culture is and has built an amazing brand. And I love how uh, just the whole essence of how they present cannabis and how they're normalizing cannabis culture in that craft market as well. Are you medical or recreational or both? I've been a medical patient uh, since I was old enough to have a license. Um, I've also been a caregiver in the MMPR system. Uh, so I do, uh, I'm now regrowing my own medicine again. Uh, for a while I had been sourcing it from other great ACMPR growers. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm medical and I'm here for the medical fight again. We're in Vancouver, so we need to talk way more about medical cannabis and the people that paved the way and people's access to medical cannabis because that's something we've massively forgotten about. With all of this great recreational cannabis, we need to make sure that the patient still comes first and we don't forget about the people that made recre recreational cannabis happen for all of us. Preach. Yeah. <laughs> I am a medical patient, so I come to it. I'm just two years new to the cannabis space, and Wonderful. I use for Crohn's anxiety and depression. So tell us what's exciting, what you're doing, what you use, what you're making, what's your next big. Uh, I have a tell really cool dinner in Toronto. I know you guys are out uh, east that way. I have a fantastic chef, Chef Dustin Gallagher. He is incredible all over Food Network, um, an incredible, incredible chef that has so many accolades, and I'm mm. so excited to help bring to fruition these dining events and bring people into a space where they feel comfortable uh, serving Are cannabis they diets. foods or are yeah. you pairing wine with food? Uh, so it'll be five, I mean, five, five courses, five wines, uh, infused food. Each course is two and a half milligrams through the first four courses. And then dessert is about 20 milligrams CBD dessert uh, just to make sure that you're not having any negative or ulterior effects that you're not as enjoying so much uh, CBD taking away that anti-anxiety. Wow. And then every dish is paired with a wine. And then using the vocabulary uh, and verbiage of wine, I'm able to draw and build a much easier bridge for a consumer that's not as used to consuming cannabis. 
and really uh, present that connoisseurship and the opportunity to taste flavors and all the depths that come with really any ingredient right. when you start looking at it deeper. I've been to a lot of these infused dinners and elevated events and they never have wine. They don't care. Yeah, they don't have alcohol with it. I know and that it's something. Is, uh, wow, you big disruptor. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's important for me. I love wine, I love beer. Uh, Canadians in general with our with our cannabis culture and our yes, cannabis sir. consumption culture, most of us have a couple beers and then have a puff. It's not a, 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 a weird thing in our society. And so just being able to use my duty of care, it's a word that we don't talk about at all in cannabis. My duty of care is my responsibility to make sure the customer, the consumer is safe. So, mm. you know, by, by moderating the amount of alcohol that they consume, by get, making sure there's water in front of somebody, uh, you can really help and build that bridge. I think it's important that everybody sees it like a normal dining experience because as soon as you remove the opportunity to order a glass of wine or have a beer, now it feels different. Right. And we can't normalize it as easily if it feels different. Right. Well said. Well said. I think we got an ambassador here. Hello, <laughs> Cannabis Somali. He yeah. does a lot of cool stuff and he's interesting to talk to. He's got a great personality. I think we need a lot. And I mean, I'm old as hell. And he's young and fresh. He's got lots of good ideas. Definitely fresh. <laughs> hey, right? Very motivated fresh. for change, you know? Like, so what? what's next for you? What is the next? Like, so we're Lyft again tomorrow. Are you here tomorrow? Yeah, I'm here tomorrow. I'm speaking at 1230 on the future of social okay. consumption. Okay. Uh, something I'm clearly very passionate about, access and how people can actually consume uh, their medicine or their intoxicant the way that they freely want to without persecution. Okay. So, cool. sorry to interrupt. No so how can the average person find people like yourself YouTube the internet uh, I'm only as good as the people that search for the things that I'm putting out because I can't advertise as a cannabis person especially because my name is the cannabis sommelier I have to attract your attention and find things that you want to see so on the YouTube channel I teach a lot of food infusions how to make cocktails how to make a lot of different very basic ingredients for your kitchen so you can explore cannabis cuisine yourself videos like salt, uh, how to make infused salt. So you can just... How do you make infused salt? Uh, you make an infused <laughs> hot sauce first, and then you make <laughs> an infused mm. salt. Uh, mm. But it it's all it takes right. one base ingredient. I'll check that video. <laughs> yeah, please. No, well, I was asking. I, I'm thinking more on the likes of people doing what you do. Oh, Your uh, own team. Yeah, I'm. it's like, interesting because I'm the cannabis sommelier. There's nobody else doing the wine world. Uh, except for one lady in the United States, but a little bit of a different approach. I'm a cannabis guy first, and she is a wine person first. And right. so seeing that mesh and how it's changing and building and evolving into these different ideas is interesting. But for now, because as you mentioned, you don't see wine at cannabis dinners because of the fact that Health Canada's made it illegal to uh, mix the two for right. now or in the same space. But that's all bound to change, especially as we see markets like Europe, uh, Mexico, where drinking cultures are much more progressive, right. uh, it, and smoking is much more pr progressive. What do you think well. of the infused wines? The infused um, I've, I've worked with Rebel Coast before in uh, Beverly Hills. Uh, they were the original ones. I love their wine, and it's uh, their actual wine wine. Um, it's not as delicious as I would like it to be, uh, but it's a great product for somebody that wants a different alternative and is really used to consuming an intoxicant in the form of a beverage, especially right. if it's wine and they feel comfortable that way. Mm -hmm. um, Are you making cocktails here this weekend or no? No cocktails this weekend. That was, oh, that was just at Hempfest. So I know. good. Shout out to Hempfest. <laughs> that was true. <laughs> so where can everybody find you? Uh, Instagram, The Cannabis Psalm. Uh, YouTube, The Cannabis Sommelier, S-O-M-M-E-L-I-E-R. It's, really, it's hard to say, it's hard to spell, but yep, if you can yep, spell it, you can up, find me. Or just The Cannabis Psalm. If you type it into Google or thecannabissalm.com, I'm all over. Uh, I'm always happy to chat. DM me, tweet me, Facebook me. I'm happy to answer questions. What are the next couple of events you're going to be at? Oh, I don't, I don't even have that lined up at this point. This year is so crazy. I feel like 2018 was the, the, the starting phase. 2019 was the practice. Now 2020, it's on the ground running full speed and I can't even look too far ahead but we are going to be going to Jamaica in November for a really cool culinary cannabis event uh, uh, which will be incredible and I hope you guys will come join and uh, hey give us uh, the first insights on that yeah we'll I will for sure I will for definitely. sure thank you thank you for coming on the green room thanks for sharing space and time with us thanks for having me thanks. Andrew <laughs> the cannabis small AA stopping in at the green room guys where cannabis talk is always fresh and a, a little, little bit, bit sticky, sticky. Keep it locked <laughs> to Cannabis Wiki.
the green room and we're out.